Good world building makes sense when you examine details and context of the story. Great world building makes sense in the context of the backstory. The Draca army, as described in Marching Through Georgia and depicted in the cover art, looks cool. But looking cool doesn't win wars. There are several details that don't make much practical sense on their face, but that have a strange sense of authenticity in their fictional time and place. Let's take a look at the field kit of a Draca citizen soldier during the Eurasian War. That's World War II to us. Some context. Over the course of the last century, there has been a remarkable convergence among military forces around the world. During the Boer War and the Great War, the distinctive and colorful uniforms of the past were quickly replaced with various shades of brown, green, and gray, colors that roughly match dirt. Fast forward to today, and the major militaries of the world have a very similar look in terms of uniform and equipment. This is convergent evolution. Armies tend to adopt what works, so naturally the trend will be toward increasing similarity. The Draca buck the trend a bit. Let's start at the top. The Draca helmets certainly look cool. The overall impression is like a cross between the distinctive German Stahlhelm and a samurai helmet. Very Vaderish. It offers more protection for the neck, which seems like a great idea when bullets and shrapnel are flying about. But over the past 30 years, military helmets have actually been getting shorter. For reasons that are obvious to anyone who's ever fired a rifle while wearing a helmet. If it's too long, it can interfere with positioning the rifle stock. You can't go prone without it hitting your back and sliding down over your eyes. More mass equals more weight. Overall, there's just too much stuff hanging off your head. It's heavy, uncomfortable, and it gets in the way. But rather than dismiss this as bad world building, this design makes some sense in the context of a colonial power in Africa. Something they developed in their bush wars when they fought enemies who generally didn't shoot back very well, and the wide-rimmed helmet helped to keep the hot sun and the rains of Africa off their necks. Pith helmet meets steel pot. We could expect they'd make some changes after they got into a war with a mechanized army in Europe. We might initially see soldiers in the field cutting down the helmets into something more like the German design, or perhaps even more like the American helmets of the day to avoid too closely matching the distinctive German silhouette in a firefight. The Draca would be issuing revised helmets in short order. I've talked about the Holbars T6 before, the Draca standard issue assault rifle. It's roughly comparable to an AK, but only roughly. The most notable difference between the whole bars and modern equivalents is the method of feeding ammunition. Military rifles today feed from magazines. A box with a spring that pushes the bullets up. Magazines are easy and fast to switch out. A soldier can carry a bunch of them, and it leaves the rifle much lighter and easier to maneuver with than having a whole bar style 75 round drum hanging forward of your grip. It was a good solution 100 years ago, and it remains so today. The T6 is a light machine gun. The book tells us that it feeds from belts. Belts are a pain. Reloading requires opening covers and aligning the first cartridge or a feed tab. They can get tangled if you don't have them properly positioned in drums or some sort of canister, which are heavy and bulky. A mag change can be done in a couple seconds one-handed. Loading a belt is a bit more involved. Based on what is visible in the cover art and the absence of an external ammo belt, I've depicted the T6 with a drum-attached magazine style based on an internal belt feed mechanism turned on its side, pulling the cartridges up from factory pack drums. It's my own weird solution to reconcile the cover art, the appendices, and the action of the story. Again, this may be a throwback. When the Holbars T6 is introduced in 1936, the Draca experience of war is fighting bush wars against large numbers of poorly equipped natives, for which belt-fed machine guns were historically used to great effect. Their inspiration for the T6 is probably smaller Maxim gun rather than fast rifle. The Draca then fought against the Chinese and Ottoman armies of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These are disciplined forces that fight in massed formations, but are not as well equipped as the Draca, again making high-volume machine gun fire highly effective. With this as the background, there is a logic to the belt-fed hole bars. Citizen formations can advance in groups using their T6s as rifles, with large forces of Janissaries serving as the bulk of any attack. Any Draca infantryman can instantly become a light machine gunner to either defend a position or provide cover for an advance. As long as they're in full-strength units with overlapping fire and Janissary infantry, they're all right. But when we're looking at small Draca units in built-up areas fighting partisans like we see in Marching Through Georgia, everyone lugging a belt-fed machine gun around isn't ideal.
Consider if the M249 saw was issued to everyone instead of the M4. Imagine the problems that ensue. Draca soldiers are described in the text and shown in the cover art carrying machetes slung over their back. I'd expect Draca soldiers to be ditching them as soon as they realized they were more likely to face piles of snow than dense jungle. All across Eastern Europe are piles of very high quality discarded Draca machetes. And of course, riding boots. As both historical Nazis and their spacefaring cousins of the 70s and 80s sci-fi demonstrate, they look cool. They're also, as the name implies, good for riding horses. They're not so great for slogging through mud, running, or fording filthy streams. The Draco would have a lot of horse riding in their military up to the time of the Eurasian War, but I don't see riding boots being their standard issue boots. My guess is that, like German officers, they just liked them. The integrated knee pads, though, <coughs> that's where Draco Kid is 100% forward thinking. Fictional settings need to be internally consistent, but they also need the chaos and noise of real technological and social development. Bad fiction is dismissed as trash, but good fiction is held to a higher standard than reality. Bad world building is dumb stuff like manhole covers that are any shape that isn't a circle.